diversity, so production will be bringing lots of interesting stuff here, and we're bringing Corrin and Terry to your screen right now, so this is kind of interesting. We saw uh, Scarab, obviously, got the poor, t uh, poor Philly uh, tag, so we got Puff Tendo on the, uh, I believe, the, uh, the Terry, so this is going to be interesting. What do you think about this matchup? I think that if Corrin wants to, she doesn't have to get touched by Terry, but if Terry gets in, it's going to be problematic. Some of the best frame data, some of the highest knockback on all of his moves. And, you know, he does have a couple tools compared to characters like Ken and Kazuya in terms of getting in there, namely that Crack Shoot. Crack Shoot is a huge movement burst that they can use. I mean, of course, we all know Corrin has the same thing in like the pin kick. Uh, so movement is going to be a really big factor in this set, I believe. And we're already on small battlefield, which is a stage that Corrin can exert so much pressure with the long range of the sword and other options. We're seeing it right now, but even though Puff Tender was kind of getting pressured out here, as soon as we get that go option, I mean, things can start getting a really I see, you know? Yeah, things change up a lot. You're just playing with the fear of God in your heart. However, Corrin has really solid kill options at this percent. Up air, such a menace in terms of juggling. And you got the pin in the corner. Forward smash in case they even decide to shield. You know what? That actually beats it. Yeah, that's crazy. That was almost a time to see maybe a Buster Wolf. Uh, those scramble situations are where Terry can really make that money. And we have the heft to be able to survive some of those kill options. So we're staying alive right now. But 103, yeah, with all that rage, that's going to be enough to take it. And the pin, perfectly spaced, going to take that stock. And uh, we're going to lead to a lead for uh, Terry. For oh, love the auto cancel power dunk right there, making sure to have no landing lag in case it didn't hit. But guess what? It did. And we've got an even game, two clean stocks each. Scarab gonna break the ice though, a dash attack, forward air, but no combo afterward. Terry, normally you'd think being a heavy character gets you comboed, but at low percent, sometimes it means there's not enough knockback to it's get the follow-up. Yeah, fall speed is gonna be a really big factor in that one too, so uh, looking like a good edge guard in the making, but instantly the reversal comes back in. Scarab starts to get juggles yet again. These juggles have been so good. You talked about the up air yourself, Max. I mean, this is just one of those things that is so uh, pertinent in this matchup. We're looking for the, the get-up option. You're trying to expedite that get-up option, uh, but you're not gonna get it. So I respect the patience for Puff Tendo. Just kind of hang out there on ledge. Yeah, forward smash covering so much, but if you want to hang out there and they don't angle it down with absolutely perfect spacing and maybe a bad ledge hang, you're probably fine. True. I like that matchup knowledge right there. That said, we are five years into this game, so you're going to see people, even at the lower and mid level, like even first round of pools, they kind of know what they're doing. Yeah, eventually at this point, you got to know by now, man. Like, even Terry's been out long enough as DLC. Like, we know uh, what this character is capable of. But that's what I'm talking about. When you see a pin instead of the forward smash, that forces the get off option. Then you have a follow up option in the kick. That's a really, really nice move. And the conditioning, I think, is what's leading to this. Yeah, Scarab in a position where they could wait as long as is necessary for that get up. And yeah, Puff Tendo just handing it over. So we're going to see that stock lead begin here. How much extra credit can you rack up on this Terry? Well, not going to get the stock up the shoulder check, but we are going to take this and the jab, jab to a rising tackle. That's the nice option because you can either go into the power dunk or you can go into the rising tackle. It's all following the DI, and that's huge here because uh, Scarab wants to find that escape option. He's not going to be given the options, and as soon as Puff Tendo gets that hit confirmed, things start getting scary. Ooh, the dash attack for that extra reach. I love that. Might have whiffed on a ground normal, or sorry, any other ground normal right, than right. that just because of how far Terry went off the stage. Suddenly, though, we are almost back to even. Getup attack is going to break Scarab free. Let's see how things shake out on this last stock, potentially the last 30 seconds to a minute of gameplay here. Whoa, clean over the obstacle. I thought the Olympics were in Paris. Yeah, I mean, we jumped the hurdle and it's all good. But Whoa! the metal here, you're going to look for that uh, power geyser. It's not going to hit. I love the roll through, and Scarab stays alive. This time, finding the perfect space again on the pin, tipping the toes, and there it is. First game goes to Scarab. Jumping a hurdle as well over that power wave and pin right to the face, and that's going to send Terry packing. Wow. Pretty good and competitive first game of the block, I must sure. say. And that's just going back to what we were talking about five years into this game. I mean, of course, there's still new blood coming into the scene, but for the most part, anyone who's entering a bracket is kind of a threat. Right, and I think you mentioned the matchup knowledge as well. Like, there were so many good, uh, good, I guess, notes about what we're seeing from the matchup knowledge from both players because, you know, obviously Scarab is trying to poke through the ledge with the upbeat, but Puff Tendo doing the right thing by shielding out that little hit at the very mm -hmm. end so they don't get caught. Then at the same time, it's like you know exactly where you can uh, find an opening and then they throw the power wave and Scarab is able to jump over it. Knows that that's going to create a little bit of vulnerability for Puff Tendo. So we're seeing it on both sides. I'm already going <laughs> to hope to see an even more competitive game in game two.
no gimmies anymore in the 2024 meta. You can't just jank somebody out because they've never seen or bought your character. Cheese don't work no more. It's true. Well, it's still, you know. It does sometimes. <laughs> they'll have seen it before, at least. It does like, oh, I should have known. It's going to be a specific kind of cheese. Very true. Aged five years. <laughs> All right. Up tilt. Nothing off of that. That is, I guess, not as much of a combo starter as most up tilts. Kind of disappointing for Corrin, but down tilt is what's going to make you that money and get the free follow ups. Yeah, no tech on that situation as well. So you land and then you get a little bit of a jab lock, which is kind of weird looking, but I mean, for Terry, it works. And you get a power dive afterwards as well. It's huge. They'll stand off in the center of the stage. Scarab showing that option a couple times in the last game. Now it looks like Puff Tendo's ready for that down air. Sure, if you let go of your shield too early, the multi-hits might catch you, but there's a lot of lag on that if you're patient. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, that is usually something that we use as a, a hard mix-up, something that is not often used. But since we're going for it a lot, I, I have to wonder where the payoff is. Getting out of the forward smash now, the chainsaw usually oh. takes it, but the roll back, the air dodge back, it's still caught by the Buster Wolf, goes full stage, and that's going to take the stock. Bit of a lucky break on Puff Tendo's part there. you got to get the second jab to link into Buster Wolf, but it just so happened to be a buffered roll or something to Let's that go. effect, and it got Scarab caught. Now it's Terry in the lead. Let's see. I mean, this character's low percent game is crazy. We could see a huge lead start to surface. Oh, yeah. You get, like, one jab into Buster Wolf into another Buster Wolf, and you get, like, 80% damage on you. This could be a snowball in the making. Puff Tendo has to get back to ledge first. Probably an accidental up B right there from, from Puff Tendo. Not punished optimally. It was just the sour spot on the pin. But either way, we're going to see Scarab clean the next stock up. This is so, so close. All right, Naren to, uh, geez, uh, heart, the power, burn knuckle. I'm okay. forgetting all his moves. No, you're good. I mean, uh, sometimes he says the name of it, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he's a little mute, but it's okay. Sometimes you can't understand what he's saying. It sounds like he's saying, grab a coke. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All right, so we still have some good uh, center stage presence from Puff Tendo. Is doing the right things, but Scarab doesn't seem like to, to be in a huge rush to, to get back. Just wants to pick their shots right. They know that they can preempt with some of these longer range moves. And Scarab is doing the right things until we see another of the down airs. And we're starting to see more punishes on that, Max. Next up, smash out of shield is going to do the job. Got to be very careful if you're Scarab right here. Oh, no. Jab, jab into the rising tackle and old fighting game adage. ABC, always be charging. Hold that down when you're in the middle of any move and you're going to have the charge version ready to go. Yeah, but that is more of an option select because then you can go into a power dunk as well. It's just like it's so easy for you to be able to switch up on a dime. And that's the versatility of Terry that we're seeing on full display. Still, it's going to lead to a, uh, a bigger and bigger lead for Puff Tendo. Looking like Scarab is having to fight from behind. And now that it's Corrin who has to approach, you're going to start to see Terry's strength shine a little bit more. When you're the one coming in on him, he can punish you so, so hard. It's a little tough for him to chase someone down if they've got the range advantage on them. You're right. A lot of damage off the rapid jab, though. We're getting closer and closer to the uh, to the go moves, but we're just shy of it, which is actually perfect because if Scarab is able to uh, get Puff Tendo off stage, they can take that stock without having to worry about go. But this is the big chance. Can you defeat them before they get their feet back on ledge? And we do a really nice rundown from Scarab on the ledge. Very impressive stuff. Cutting the lead off before it gets out of hand here. Love that back hit of up air. Normally would open up the world in terms of combos, but Scarab maybe not ready, maybe not believing in themselves enough to get the follow-up. True. The mental stack starting to wear down a little bit, you know, when you're behind that far, it's going to be tough. And, yep, catching the pop up into that down air, that's going to be just enough for Puff Tendo to take game two and bring this to a game three. Two pretty close games, I got to say. Even though that one was a little more dominant than Scarab's win in game one, it's True. still last stock it still feels tense right so yeah again anybody is a threat in this late stage of the meta yeah and we've seen a lot of hesitation on the ledge that i think is leading to uh, some of these crucial scrambles you know a lot of stocks taken off of just taking someone out of their ledge hang or getting them out of their ledge and vulnerability you're like finding a way in and yeah i mean a lot of the times the, the edge guard really will win out so we're going to go to game three, and we're seeing Hollow Bastion as the stage kind of pick. Now, this is a classic foreign stage for many reasons, um, but the low ceilings make me think that those rising tackles are going to be a little bit more dangerous than before. True, both of these characters do quite enjoy killing off the top. It could be a Corrin up air at some uncomfortable percents as well. One thing I do want to point out that kind of works against Corrin is no side platforms. We saw in game one, I believe it was actually the finisher, Scarab 
did ledge jump into pin, and that caught Terry just standing right underneath the platform. That's such a good layout for Corrin. Obviously, this is as well, because you can shark the platform so well and control the center of the stage, but that one little trick is off the table now. That is true. But we've also seen a little bit of the crack shoot while punishing Scare while they're on the platform. We saw that last game in uh, PS2, and now that there's a bigger platform, there's going to be more of a temptation to stay on that platform to try to get what you want in terms of juggles and stuff. And that crack shoot could cover the full length of that. So we'll have to see. This edge guard's got to pan out either way. Another of these down is it's starting to work again, but we'll have to see if it's got longevity in this set. Yeah, it's a tricky move, but ultimately very reactable. So you got to be, you got to use that sparing. Right. Nothing sparing here. We're going to look for that punish. The up smash shielded mm. out. And this time we get out just in time. Great DI out. And uh, we're not going to get caught by the rising tackle. Doesn't get caught by the pin either. So we're going back to reset. Yeah, of course, Terry has these very guaranteed combos, but you have to recognize the spacing, right? If you catch at the outer crazy. edge of the jab, but yeah, you also got to space around Terry as his opponent. Otherwise, a raw power dunk is just going to catch you air to air. God, getting around the pin via power dunk was crazy. Well, we're bringing these two stocks. The crowd's starting to come alive, and it's like it's like 11.20 a.m. That's crazy. One thing I know about Philly is they ride for Philly. You're right, you're right. They are up and at them, man. I mean, they're not going to be stopping cheering for their boy. We got to see what happens. Puftendo still fighting and keeping a slight lead. Oh, wow, dodging the crack shoot just narrowly. No punish though, that's another downside to the platform. You have to navigate around that, get through it in order to punish somebody below. Oh, okay. Oh, grab a Coke. Yeah, not gonna get the burn knuckle though. We're still struggling to find that suck. And that could be very dangerous in an early kill situation, but perfect spacing on the rising tackles at ledge as well. This is something I've been seeing from Puptendo. They're getting right up underneath. And of course, when you use the full charge move, legs are invulnerable, have the ability to get back. And we're finding some damage now. This is even as it gets, Max. Wow, actually getting the Buster Wolf off just one jab. Lightning quick execution on the part of Puff Tendo. You gotta have that. Sometimes you don't wanna press the second jab. It's less good on block, if I'm not mistaken. The first yeah. one is very, very safe. So yeah, it is have that ready. Yeah, it's, it's better pressure and of course can still link, but this time actually missing it off the second jab. That's the easier one. Yeah. Puff Tendo will make it make sense, brother. Yeah, seriously. We need some consistency right here because otherwise Scarab is gonna be able to bring this right home. Game three victory. Right now, there's a lot of shielding. Puftendo feeling kind of scared, putting on the ropes. Scarab trying to hold on to this lead. Ooh, that was the trickiest use of the dare yet. Using the full hop pin, which of course you do have enough time to double jump afterward. Oh no, jab, jab into the rising tackle. It's so close, 50% margins here. What can you do in Puftendo's position to bring this back? I mean, if you're Terry, you got a lot of options to tack on 50. And you'll have even more in 50, because uh, once you get the go moves, I mean, if you stay alive immediately after that, uh, Corrin can sometimes have trouble killing if they don't get the right kill options. So some of these juggles might end up being stale by too many up airs uh, that might not kill in a crucial moment. So Puftendo not taking too much damage is actually putting on the, the hurt on Scarab uh, without even needing the go moves at all. And now we've got an edge guard. How does this turn out? We almost catch that roll, but this time we parry the downer, unable to punish on the platform, good spacing, and this is gonna get close, but not gonna kill. Not quite the death blow just yet. Scarab though, off the stage, down a ton of percent, over 60 Ooh, or over 50 right now, and that's do gonna it. do it, I think. Yeah. yeah, okay, it is gonna do it. And so we find uh, the rising tackle after all. Uh, just getting close enough was all he needed. Wow, what a good set. Coming back from the game one drop as well, Puff Tendo clutching it out. Unfortunate for Philly. Sorry, Bryce. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> it's just how it goes. It is how it goes. Yeah, I mean, you gotta like, you know, we talked about it being like no gimmies here, and this is true. You know, you might have won game one. You might have gotten close to, to taking control of game two, but I mean, it really felt like Puff Tendo, once they found their their footing. Uh, it was back and forth in game three, but they kept that little bit of a lead and they took every opportunity they were given and they didn't take anything for granted. You know, they were just able to pick their shots very, very wisely. And once you get that hit confirmed, like I said, it really was just muscle memory at work. Yeah, I, of course you have to have that with characters like Terry that have these built-in confirms, right? That are slight execution tests. You got a double quarter circle forward, which is why we saw yeah. one really impressive Buster Wolf off the yes. jab one, a couple drops with yeah. the Buster Wolf as well. But I mean, that could have been an even bigger win for Puff Tendo had that last one in game three gone through. I know, and of course it's not a real command grab, so it doesn't actually work on shield, right? right? So it doesn't work like you think it would. So shielding that out is oftentimes the best thing you can do. Although, 
when you get close to the shield button, sometimes you buffer things like that roll out or the air dodge out, whatever it was, and you get caught by it in the end. So it's, right. it's an idea, but sometimes it come back, uh, comes back to bite you if the execution isn't there. True. We did also see a dropped Buster Wolf confirm end up working out, like you said, because right. of the buffered roll. So uh, we got a little flavor of everything in that first match. But I got to say, I think every tournament that I go to, the first match of pools gets better. And that looks like True. pretty solid. I mean, if you showed me that in 2019 when Terry first came out, I'd be pretty impressed. I'd be I'm like, yeah, very like, impressed. Wow, I'm still very impressed.